everyone, I'm Alex Ray, I'm a photographer from Philadelphia, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I make this beer splashing photo. For this shoot, we're going to be using prop beer, using things you probably already have around the house. Partly to save cost, partly because it's more versatile, partly so your studio doesn't get all sticky, and also you really shouldn't just be wasting good beer. We're going to begin by making our diluted brown food dye. To do this, fill a small glass about halfway with water, and then add one drop of green food coloring, and two to three drops of red food coloring. Next, we get our glass. For this shoot, I've chosen a tulip glass which is popular for serving Belgian styles of beer. One thing you want to be careful of is that your glass is extremely clean, because flashes have a tendency to highlight any smudges that are left on there. Fill your glass about halfway with water, then add a teaspoon of baking soda. Next, you're gonna to wanna to add about two to three drops of yellow food dye. About a half teaspoon of dish soap, more or less depending on if you want more or less foam head in your beer. Stir until the baking soda is fully dissolved. Now we get the diluted brown dye that we made before. Add as much as you like to get the color of beer that you want. Different styles of beer can have different colors, ranging from a pale straw yellow deep red, or even a very dark black. Then, add two tablespoons of vinegar from a plastic container. This is going to react with the baking soda to give you the carbonation and the foam of the beer. You'll want to act quickly because this only lasts for a few seconds. You can add more baking soda, vinegar, and dish soap to give you more carbonation and more foam. This is what it looks like when you add twice as much of each. The one thing left to add? Computer duster. That's how we're going to make our splashing effect. I actually found my bathroom was the ideal place to shoot this. Partly because I can close the door, and because there are no windows, I can get total control over the ambient light. Also, this shoot is pretty messy, so being able to set up on the edge of the bathtub will save me a lot of cleanup. I did a couple of test shoots to dial in my settings. Now, what I want to see is when I shoot without flash, to have an image that's completely black, but properly exposed when I have my flash on. I also have my flash pointed directly at the ceiling. This gives me a soft, even light, and unlike off-camera lighting, won't create glares on the surface of the glass. I want to keep my flash on a low power, because I'm going to be shooting images fairly quickly, and a lower power allows your flash to recharge faster and keep up. I also want to use a fast shutter speed to freeze the action, even though I do have flash. A little bit of ambient light can create some motion blur in this. I should also note that when I shot the final images, I had the lights turned off. Now time to actually start shooting. I like to use a remote shutter and fire off a couple shots as I'm spraying to get a lot of different shots through one splash. So going through these photos, that we took, you can see that the uh, the foam of the beer is splashing in a lot of different ways, giving you a lot of different directions and shapes, and you know there are a bunch of these that could be good, but I'm just going to pick one for now to do an edit on. So we're taking this into Adobe Camera Raw, and we're just going to do some uh, some broad color and tone adjustments right now. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is look at the histogram up here. The, I'd like to bring the exposure up and the whites just a bit so that way the whites are kind of just touching on the edge of there and actually the second thing we need to do before I forget use the straighten tool because this is a little bit crooked 
next going to bring the black down a little bit. Uh, that is going to make the the highlights and the wrinkles of our backdrop there a little less apparent and bring the shadows up a little bit so that way the image isn't totally dark. Uh, clarity, I usually just like to bump this up to about 10 or 15 just to bring a little bit of detail out. And then also in terms of raising the white, I like to bring the highlights back in so that way you can see a little bit of the shadow in the foam makes it look, makes it look a little less flat. Uh, vibrant and saturation You can kind of see what that's doing, but I don't really like what that is doing. So next, going to go to my tone curve adjustment. I like to do medium contrast, just to see what it does. And I think I'm going to bring my shadows up a little bit more, just to compensate for that. Maybe raise my exposure a tad. Now, just as kind of a, a standard thing, sharpening, I usually bring that to about 60. HSL adjustments. Uh, now I have added photos like this before and the oranges tend to affect the liquid of the beer and also the wood. Yellow tends to affect the foam so you can adjust the, uh, the saturation and the brightness individually so that orange of the liquid beer there is looking a little bit dim. I'm going to bring that up. Uh, saturation I think I'm going to yeah, bring this down a little bit. And hue, I'm going to make those oranges just a little bit more red. So that way it makes it look a little bit more golden. And make the yellows a little bit more orange. So that way it looks a little less green. And I think one more thing I'm going to do is in this curved layer, bring this point down a bit. That's going to help blacken my uh, my background a little bit more. Now that I'm actually in Photoshop, uh, I'm going to make some more local adjustments. Now the first thing I'm going to do is try to bring my hand out of that frame because that's obviously something we can't leave in there. Now on a black background, it's really easy to remove. Just lasso tool it there. Edit. Fill. Contents black. Okay, uh, and even though I did a lot of uh, color adjustments, you can still see a bit of the highlights in the, uh, the backdrop there. So what I'm going to do is go select color range, select that, and you can see the white area shows what I am selecting. And then do a layer, new adjustment layer, brightness and contrast. And that is going to give me a brightness and contrast layer only on what I've selected. So I'm going to pull this brightness all the way down. Uh, what you can see is that there's a little bit of the beer glass that does get caught in that. So uh, I'm going to paint on the layer mask. Switch to black. And maybe make my brush a bit bigger for this. So now that drop in brightness is only going to affect the black background and not anything else. The next thing I'm going to do, I want to make this wood extend past the edge of the frame. So I'm going to, again, take my lasso tool, select this area, and go to edit fill, but instead of black, I'm going to have content aware as my contents. And what that does is it generates some uh, some new material there that it uh, kind of judges based on what's present in the, uh, the rest of the image around it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Alright, so as you can see, it's not always perfect. Uh, so in cases like that, what I kind of like to do is just add a selection here, make that a, uh, a straight edge, and then I'm going to use the clone stamp, select 
this is my sampling area and fill that in and sometimes you still get some of these hard edges here so healing brush normally takes care of those Now you can kind of see this edge here it looks a little bit wonky too so I'm going to go back into my clone stamp click here and just copy that edge it's not perfect but I think it'll do it for well yeah I'm going to clean it up a little bit more That doesn't look bad. Next thing we need to do is I'm going to crop this a little bit. Uh, so the bottom edge, you can kind of see that that edge of the wood is still there, and I don't really like that too much. So I'm going to just crop this in a little bit so that, that comes out. Uh, yeah, so you can kind of see that the the third line goes along that glass, which is nice. Uh, I would like this one to kind of come along the uh, the edge where the wood meets the black, but at this point there's really not a way to reframe it like that. So uh, I'm just gonna click OK on that. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do, uh, since I was shooting at uh, an ISO that was a little on the high side, uh, I have the Nick Collection, which used to be free from Google. Uh, now I think it costs like seventy dollars, something like that. So, gonna use the fine two, which is a pretty good noise reduction filter. Uh, let that do its thing. And there's just one more part of the collection plugin that I want to use to do some local adjustments. So I'm gonna go down to Viveza two. Uh, this has kind of a wide variety of adjustments that you can do and over on here there's a panel that lets you do global adjustments but sometimes I like to do those but in this case I'm just going to do it local so I'm going to add a control point to the foam uh, so right here you see the control point is on the foam and anything that is in that circle and kind of has a similar color and texture will be uh, affected by what I do to this. So you can see all the white areas what's affected, the dark areas not as much. So for those I'm gonna bring the structure up a little bit and that just kinda manipulates the shadows and the highlights a bit to add a bit more depth to it. And I'm gonna see what the contrast does. Yeah, I'll add a little bit of contrast to this. Next, I'm going to add a control point to the liquid of the beer here. Bring this down so it's only affecting that much. Uh, for that, I'm going to bring the brightness up so that way you can kind of see the detail in that a little bit more. And I'm going to add one in the actual stem of the glass. So for that, I'm going to increase the contrast. And I'm going to add one more in the wood here that I'm also going to increase the structure on. That kind of helps bring the wood grain out a bit. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. And I think I'm going to drop the shadows too, just to kind of make that a little bit darker to match the, uh, the rest of what I have there. And yeah, add a little bit of warmth to it too. Makes it look a little bit more appealing. So they have this uh, couple different ways you can do it. 
just what uh, is after your adjustments. Uh, I like to use a slider here so that way you can do kind of a, uh, a real time before and after or you can split it to see your before and after in uh, two separate panes. So I think that looks pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a non-destructive dodge and burn layer. Uh, dodge and burn are pretty popular tools, but adding it on a separate layer actually does uh, add a lot more possibilities. So I'm going to do new layer, I'm going to change the mode to overlay, and fill with 50% gray. So you don't really see anything right there, but anything that's darker on that layer is going to darken it. And it's lighter is going to lighten it. So, mostly what I want to do is get this uh, the bulb of the glass here, try to make it so that the edge kind of separates a bit more from the background. So, quick select tool, going to try to get just that edge there. Yeah, that's not too bad. So, I'm gonna switch my brush to white. I've got my opacity set pretty low. Normally, like 10 to 20 percent is what you'd like. So that way, every stroke you do just lightens that up a little bit. Now, if I turn my layer on and off, you can kind of see the difference there. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side. I'm going to switch that to minus, try to deselect some of the background there. brush and paint that in a bit. Now one of the good things about that is that with normal dodge and burn tool once you do it it's there you can't really get rid of it except by uh, going back but you can kind of see right in there there's a little bit of uh, the foam that got dodged that I didn't really quite like like that so I am going to Change my brush color here to 50% gray. And I think I'm going to set my opacity all the way back up. And that way I can just blank that out. And that bit of foam that got lightened there is now back to how it was. So you can kind of see the before and after like that. Again, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to have set my opacity back down. Uh, Maybe to, yeah, about that again. And I'm going to burn this wood in a bit. Still doesn't look quite as dark as I'd like it. And if there were any residual highlights of uh, the curtain up here, I could certainly make do with them. Gonna go back to white and maybe make this glass base a little bit brighter. And I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. All right, so I went back and did a little bit more cleaning up and I realized that the reason that I was losing this edge here was because my uh, my brightness and contrast layer that I was using to eliminate the highlights in the backdrop was kind of bleeding over into the, uh, the bulb of the glass here. So I was able to just go into that layer mask and paint that back in and that really brought the edge back. Anyway, I hope you found this informative and learned something that you can apply to your own editing. Thanks for watching my very first photography tutorial. If you like this video, share it with a friend, or check out my links. Follow me on social media, or suggest an image from my gallery for my next video. Thanks. Thanks for watching my very first photography tutorial video.
for watching my very first photography tutorial video. If you like this video, share it with a friend. Yeah.